for anyone who is thinking about building a perpetual motion magnet motor, we are offering some advice. The quickest design might be to equally space five magnet pairs in a circle and put six steel blocks on a central shaft to produce more than 10 watts. The only challenge would be to make the parts stiff enough to stop parts from contacting. Anemometers with three cups and three phase electric motors are state of their arts. Three phases may also become state of the art for our perpetual motion magnet motors. Three magnets might be best in combination with four blocks of steel. This technology can be accurately computer simulated to determine the forces needed to establish proper stiffness and gaps for any combination. We use FEA freeware called FEMM. Just like conventional electric motors, attraction forces are much greater than propulsion forces, so a more formidable design challenge, especially when the magnet poles are large. An analogy might be the flag. Stand to attention forces for a flag are much greater than perpendicular flutter forces, just as attraction forces are much greater than perpendicular forces causing propulsion in electric motors. The relationship has been shown in other experiments. I believe this experimenter is trying to demonstrate perpetual motion flutter with supercooling. Levitation is the stand to attention force. The experimenter is clearly trying to show what I would call flutter. His goal is to achieve perpetual flutter and evolve it into an alternative to burning oil. Levitation is cute, but is it relevant? When we tested this device, we noticed at the extra transition boundaries what seemed to be magnetically repulsed steel. Maybe levitation is a better word. Lots of rattle at the newfound boundaries, and none when the stand-to-attention forces prevail. Every enigma we observed had some equilibrium point where something that could be called levitation occurred. How does this relate to gravitational momentum change? Consider a mission to get to Saturn, gaining momentum at Mars. Levitation, or if you prefer, transition boundaries occur where Earth and Mars gravity pull equally in opposite directions. And when the same equilibrium occurs, voyaging between Mars and Saturn. Our devices use no heat or cold, so somebody else will need to explain that. We are a bit stuck on the whole energy thing. A Tarzan swing could get us to work and back without burning any oil. We might need to climb a few steps to compensate for some friction loss, but oil would be irrelevant. So heat and cold just might be catalysts that are an alternative to building Tarzan swings. I am sure my new grandson will ask why we burn so much oil when levitation is a far better catalyst for motors, generators, and getting to work without Tarzan swings. Returning to the fundamental equation, momentum is always conserved. With big and small masses, high school algebra indicates unequal energy distribution, or that all energy is irrelevant to or independent from conservation of momentum. The best energy explanation I have for my grandson? My kids only asked this kind of question when they were bored with their toys. A bike might stem the tide of grandson questions, but my son says these would be better toys. I have some doubts about who would be playing with the levitation toys and whether the questions would ebb. At MIT, my son was brainwashed into believing energy must be conserved until inventors find the right catalyst for better toys. For now, he will test the toys for my grandson, and the grandson will surely have more questions. His mother might not let him play with these toys. I will hide these equations once my grandson is able to understand relative, big and small, like size and value of nickels and dimes, dreading a question backed by simple logic for which I have no good answer. In the meantime, I will see if a propulsion catalyst added to this toy will make it scoot across the floor. This device that destroys energy at one polarity might be a good catalyst at the other. Or maybe this device that splits up energy, like our magnetic poles, that produce levitation. Hmm. Hmm. Or maybe
maybe a combination of both. Stay tuned and see what I learn. It is not fair for me to take all the questions. There are lots for which I have no good answers, and taxpayers pay scholars big bucks to answer some of those. This scholar may have one question's answer as his prime directive. His propaganda says answers take three weeks. Perhaps a dog ate my letters, or he only knows answers about stuff invented more than fifty years ago. I promise I won't let my grandson or cat ask him inappropriate questions like schedules for the last body bags and artificial limbs. Maybe he does not answer letters from Vietnam era vets or from citizens of humble roots. Or maybe it is my grandson rather than his who is targeted to wear this costume when oil hits ten dollars a gallon. So, if you are not in any of those categories and want to plan a party for the big day, send him a note with the prime question and let me know so I can focus on reclaiming some scorched earth.